but tonight I'm just going to try and, because this morning I said some things to the men. And tonight I think I want to say some things to the women of our church. I, I, I said some things to the men this morning and I think I was hurriedly reading a story here in the Bible. Um, uh, and um, I, I, it's a very beautiful story um, taken from the book of uh, Ruth. And you may want to turn over there, Ruth chapter 1. Uh, you may want to turn over there um, because it is a beautiful story. I, I'm not going to have time to um, expostulate uh, all of that. Um, I'm just going to try and um, say a word or two um, about it and um, try to encourage you. Uh, hopefully to uh, get you ready for uh, tomorrow morning when you have to meet the man. <laughs> because many of us have to uh, meet uh, the man. Listen, there is a story here, a beautiful story. Uh, in the um, first chapter of the book of um, Ruth, um, and uh, there are two wonderful characters uh, here, and of course one of them is uh, Ruth, because the book is named after her. I, I think it could have very easily been named after Naomi, but uh, it is named after Ruth. Now in the 16th verse of chapter 1, the Bible says, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. Now this is Ruth speaking to Naomi. Uh, to return from following after thee, for whether thou goest, I will go. And, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thou people shall be my people, and my God, and thy God, my God. Where thou dieth, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part me, part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Um, I think what we'll do uh, here for the next few minutes, give this a text and, and call it um, a winter woman, a winter woman, W-I-N-T-E-R, a winter woman. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why I, I thought that I would call it a winter woman. Um, woman, uh, because the 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 terminology winter woman has to do with the latter phases of a woman's life, and of course um, uh, we will see in just a moment uh, what happened to Naomi in the latter stages of of her life. But let me tell you a little about. Um, about uh, about Naomi. Naomi was a wonderful uh, woman. She married a man in verse two, uh, Elamelech, and um, she married this man. She was in love with this man, and uh, to this union uh, was born two sons. And so Naomi. Uh, was in a very, very happy uh, relationship with her husband, and she and he had been blessed by God to have two wonderful sons. But then, as life would have it, life uh, allowed uh, Naomi's husband to die. And then, uh, when Naomi's husband died, uh, 
Her two sons uh, married two beautiful women. Uh, one was named Ruth. Uh, one was named uh, Ruth, and the other was named Oprah. And Oprah and Ruth became Naomi's uh, daughter-in-laws. But uh, as time would have it, uh, both her sons died. And that left her with the two daughter-in-laws, Ruth and uh, Naomi, uh, uh, Ruth and Oprah. Now, Naomi's, Naomi's life went from, I guess in, in the vernacular today, we would say it went from bad to worse. Uh, she married a wonderful man and had a wonderful relationship and that husband died. They had two sons and these two sons married two beautiful women, Ruth and, and, and Oprah. And then eventually the two sons died. Now all she has is two daughter-in-laws. And uh, Ruth at this time is depressed. Uh, and Ruth is, is uh, uh, Naomi rather, I keep saying Ruth. Naomi uh, is moving up uh, in age. And, and as she moves up in age, there is nobody left in the nest. The nest is empty. Uh, she has she has had uh, a wonderful life, but life seemed to have not been too good to uh, Naomi. Uh, but I want to just say to uh, the, the the Christian women here. Uh, Sometime, sometime the better part of your life can be the winter of your life if you do not allow the summer and the spring to misuse you as you move toward the winter of your life. Your life is like uh, the rising of, a, of the sun or the breaking of a new day. You know, if you... If you are familiar with the farm, and many of you probably are not, many of you probably don't even know what a farm is, but uh, back where I lived, they had farms. I never lived on a farm, but uh, I know what happens on a farm. One, you have to get up early, and you have to work hard from sun up to sundown. Now, I know that goes on on a farm, but now, on a farm, early in the morning, you didn't really need a, an alarm clock because the rooster uh, would crow. And when the rooster crow, long about six, five or six o'clock, you know it was time to get up. But if you were to get up uh, early in the morning and stand uh, beside the window early in the morning, you will see one of the most beautiful sights that you've ever seen. And that is the sun would make its way on to the stage of life and it would uh, almost play peekaboo uh, with you as it rises uh, in the east. And if you were uh, to stand there long enough, uh, you would uh, move from the early morning into the midday. And when you move into the midday, uh, you would be privileged to hear the laughter of the children and the noise of the day. Beautiful part of the day. Birds are singing and, and, and children are laughing and children are playing and, and people are moving back and forth and, and wagons, cars and trucks are moving. Busy part of the day and you will say, oh boy, this is also a great part of the day. And you may, you may in your mind, if you were to vote for the best part of the day, you may, when you saw the sun rise and do a peekaboo from the east, you would say, well, maybe I want to vote for the morning because that's a beautiful time of day. But then when you, when you stand there and, and, and observe the midday and all the things that how alive everything is and how everything is moving, you may want to vote for the midday. 
But before you cast your vote, if you were to stand there long enough, you would see that the sun or, or later, late in the evening began to change its sundress. You would see that it would begin to go down in the west and it would change its color from a bright silver to a neon rainbow, call it orange if you like, as it began to set in the east. And then you begin to say, maybe the evening is the best part of the day. I, what I'm trying to say to particularly you who are listening to the story of Naomi, while she may have gone through some difficult things during the morning of her life, during the evening, during the, uh, the, the midday of her life, yet in the evening of her life, some good things happened to her. You see, what happens to many women in life, and I think you can attest to this, a woman spend most of her life uh, 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 identifying herself around a particular role in life all particular persons in her life and when she no longer has to play or serve in a certain role or when she no longer has to care for a certain amount of children or when the children are gone we call it the nest is empty many times that woman feels empty because she no longer has to play the role that she played either through death of the husband or maybe death of a child or maybe the children are not gone or maybe there is a divorce or maybe there is separation and she feels an emptiness. If you can identify with that, then you ought to be able to easily identify with Naomi. Naomi had a husband and they had a beautiful relationship, but she lost him. And then she had two beautiful sons, but she lost them. Now the nest is empty. Now I want you to listen to what she said. When the nest got empty, uh, Naomi said in verse number 20, she felt so empty and she felt uh, so depressed and so full of anxiety. In verse number 20, Naomi said, and she said unto them, call me not Naomi. Now that word Naomi means joy. That word Naomi means my joy. Naomi said, don't call me Naomi anymore because I don't have any joy. Don't call me Naomi anymore because I've lost my husband. I've lost my boys. I've lost my sons. I have lost everything that's dear to me. So don't call me joy anymore. I don't have any joy. She said, call me Myra. Myra means bitterness. In other words, she had gone from sweet to bitterness. She, that's the way she felt. She felt that all was lost. She felt the nest is empty and I'm no longer full of joy. I don't have any joy. Just call me Myra, which means bitterness. But I stop here today to tell every Christian woman in this house, you may have an empty nest. The children may be gone. Uh, the husband, for that matter, may be gone. You may be going through a separation. You may go be going through a broken relationship. But don't give up on God. God says in Psalm chapter 23, David says, He restore it, my soul. God will make it up to you. And, and if you have been visited by the angel of death, if death has come and visited your home, if a friend has turned their back on you, if there is a broken relationship, if there is a dif if there is difficulty in the home with the children, if mama is gone, if daddy is gone, I stop by the day to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up because God will make it up to you. You remember Hagar. Hagar in the wilderness. God sent an angel down to Hagar to tell Hagar, I'll take care of Ishmael. It's going to be all right. And if you will remember, God sends angels. You remember Samson mama. God sent an angel to Samson mother. You remember Mary, the young girl, walking listlessly on the streets of Bethlehem. God sent an angel unto her and said, Now that which is conceived in you is the Holy Spirit. You remember Mary of Magdalene at the grave site of Jesus early 
on Sunday morning, an angel came to her and said, He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. So what I'm saying, don't give up. Don't give up. The nest may be empty. The relationship may be broken. It may be that something is going wrong in your life and you feel empty, depressed. You feel full of anxiety. And even though you may be saying, don't call me full of joy anymore. I don't have any joy. I stopped by tonight to tell you, there is joy. There is joy. There is joy. For weeping only lasts for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. David said, they that weep in tears shall sow in joy. Joy comes. And so Naomi says, don't call me Naomi anymore. Uh, call me Myra because the Almighty God, in verse number 16, she says, the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. And that word bitterly simply means of the word Myra simply means uh, bitterness. And look what she said. I went out full. I went out full. And the Lord has brought me home again. Empty. How many of you have ever, how many of you started out in a marriage that was supposed to be beautiful? How many started out in a marriage relationship where the man promised all that stuff? Well, when the man said, I'm going to give you the world, when the man says all that other stuff, you know, that, that men talk about, and you, and you started out in that, and then found out that that was not the truth, and then it can work the other way around. Men can put their trust in women, and it works out the other way. It works both ways. But the point is, how many times have you been disappointed in a relationship? How many times have you been disappointed in a friendship? And you feel like maybe I did something wrong. Or maybe I said something wrong. It may not be that you said anything wrong. But don't give up. Because joy comes in the morning. The story doesn't end there. Um... Naomi uh, and Ruth and Oprah, uh, mother-in-law and daughter-in-laws, Naomi decided, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back home. I'm going back to Bethlehem. And, uh, and she told the girl, she said, now listen, you girls, still young, and you can still marry and have a family. And she said, why don't you just go ahead and I'll go on back uh, to Bethlehem. And Oprah decided that that's what she would do. Oprah decided that she would uh, make a, a, another decision and she would go another way. But Ruth decided, no, 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 no. Ruth says, no, where you go, I'll go. And where you stay, I'll stay. You know, there are some things that's, that's thicker than blood. You know, we say blood is thicker than water. There are some things that's thicker than blood. You know, friendship can be thicker than blood. You know, because your best friend may not be somebody in your family. Uh, you all going to help me along. Y'all ain't going to be here long. I'm not talking about nobody, but your best friend may not be somebody in your family. Your best friend may be somebody that, that's, that's no relationship to you. That can happen, you see. But, but uh, this, this, girl, this girl, Ruth, said to Naomi, no, 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 I'm going wherever you go. And the Lord began to bless Ruth. I don't know, maybe that's why the book was named after her. I don't know, but uh, I thought it could very easily be named after Naomi. But the, the Lord began to bless this, bless this girl, Ruth. And, and they, went back to Mo, they went down to Moab, got down to Moab. And, and when they got to Moab, uh, uh, Ruth was out there gleaming in the field. And uh, while she was gleaming in the field, a mighty man of Moab, a Moabitess, whose name was Boaz. And he saw Ruth, and you know the story. He saw Ruth, and he fell in love with Ruth, and they eventually married. And then, of course, Naomi was her advisor. You see, Naomi became a counselor. Ruth was a young girl, and, and uh, even though uh, she had been married to one of her sons, 
uh, Naomi felt that there was just no way that she would ever have another son. There was no way that, that she could ever have a lineage. That her generation was over, was cut, was gone, was all buried. But Ruth stayed with her, and 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 uh, Ruth uh, uh, needed Naomi for counsel. And the story uh, shows how that Naomi just kept advising Ruth how to get that man. You know, uh, and it's a beautiful story how how uh, uh, Na uh, how uh, Naomi just kept telling Ruth, "Now here's what you do." And here's what you do, and here's what you don't do. And if you want to marry him, here's what you do, and here's what you don't do. You know, praise God. And, 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 and Ruth appreciated that, and Ruth did everything that Naomi said, and sure enough, Boaz popped a question and, and married, uh, married Ruth. And, uh, so Naomi's life, uh, became, uh, worth something because she was guiding and counseling her daughter-in-law, Ruth. So, 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 so what I'm saying to you is, if your nest is empty, and if you are in a situation where you feel lonely because of a drastic change in your life, what I'm saying to you, don't let the change change you. Don't let the change change you. Don't be changed by your circumstances. Just remember, God is always there. God will always help you through your darkest hour. God will help you through your most difficult hour. Just don't give up. Hold the God's unchanging hand. And that's what Naomi did. And then uh, Ruth married Boaz. And, uh, and praise God, uh, she uh, lived long enough. Uh, she lived long enough. Uh, to, to, to see that this precious daughter-in-law, whom she loved, married Boaz, and they had a son. Ruth and Boaz had a son. And when they had that son over there in the last chapter of the fourth chapter, the Bible said in verse 13, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. Now look at verse 14. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. In the winter of her life, God visited her. And that's the same thing that happened to Sarah. You remember Sarah, who was the wife of Abraham? You remember that she was a most beautiful woman? You remember that Sarah was one of the most beautiful women in the land? You remember that Sarah was married to, uh, to one of the greatest men of her time. She was one of the luckiest women in the world because she was married to a man called Abraham. And, and she was a wonderful woman who loved her husband because one day Abraham said, I got to leave here. And Sarah didn't, didn't even ask where you're going. Sarah just decided, I'm, wherever you're going, I'm going with you. You remember that? You remember that God promised Sarah a son. In the summer of her life. He promised her a son in the summer of her life. And she went through the summer of her life and the fall of her life right on into the winter of her life and still didn't have the son. But in God's own time, in God's own time, God visited Sarah and she bore a son and called his name Isaac. So what I'm saying to you is very simple. And that is, whatever your situation is, Whatever the change has been, and change will surely come. Now, it may not come in a relationship. It may not come uh, in terms of uh, domesticity. That is, it may not come domestically. It may not be domestic change. It may not be a husband or a wife or a child or death of a family. It may not be that, but that's going to come a change. Even if it's only in your body, there's going to be a change. Because the body is going to change. And probably nobody old enough to realize that on Sunday, but, 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 but when you get a certain age, when you all get a certain age, I guess I'm the oldest person in the house, but, but the body will change on you. Amen. I know all y'all young over there, uh, gay, I know that. 
but but you keep living, gay. <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> yeah, it's there. yeah uh, but the body will change. It doesn't matter about the change. Don't let the change change you. Don't let the change cause you to do something that's stupid. Hold to God's unchanging hand. And then, you know, the beautiful thing about this is that that, that wonderful daughter-in-law uh, of Naomi is Ruth, married Boaz, and Boaz had a son uh, by Ruth. And you know the name of that son? The name of that son was Obed. And you know, Obed was the father of King David. And that's the lineage down through which Jesus came. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 so in the winter of her life, became, the winter of her life became the best part of her life. You see? So, so when you reach the age of 40 and 50 and 55 or whatever the case is and 60, don't, don't give up. Don't, don't feel like that all is gone. All is past. That's nothing. Oh my God. You, you, you in the best stage of life. Because Naomi was, Naomi at that stage could guide her daughter-in-law in the right way. And, 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 and in other words, she was saying, if you want to catch this man, here's how you catch him. Praise God. And, and, and of course, she didn't tell her to do anything trickery, but that was immorally wrong. But she was able to guide and able to advise. So if you in your age, when, when, when things begin to change, whether it's relationship or whether it's a physiological change, whatever it is, don't let the change change you and hold to God's unchanging hand. And the winter of your life can be the best part of your life. The winter of it, and that goes for men too. The winter of your life can be the best part of your life. Now, young, young folks said, I don't know what he's talking about because I'm only 19. I'm only 13. I, I don't know what Doc's talking about tonight because I, I'm just, I'm only 10. What's he talking about? Well, uh, that's all right. You just keep living. You just keep living, and that and, and, and will be going on the hip. But, but you just keep living, and I dare you to get 50. Then you will say, oh, that's what Doc was talking about. Yeah, because you just keep living, and you're going to make that change. But don't, not only, don't, don't forget what I said, though. When the change comes, don't let the change change you. And, and don't, ever, don't, ever, don't, don't ever feel like because the nest is empty, all is lost. All is not lost. For Jesus says, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. So you just stay with the Lord. Just stay with the Lord. Just stay with Jesus and give Jesus Christ your life. And don't let nobody turn you around. And just remember Naomi. Uh, Naomi uh, uh, stayed with the Lord. And, and, and even though she lost everything, she lost her husband, she lost her sons, and uh, uh, she lost everything. But then again, uh, Naomi still maintained her obedience to God. And when you stay obedient to God, God will make a way for you. Like I said, Hagar, Hagar was out there. And listen, listen, even, and, and I, let me make this point, because I talked about Hagar. You know Hagar was the handmaiden of Abraham. You know, Hagar was the one that, that Sarah told him to go into that we might get this son, because God had promised a son to Sarah. And she said, I'll go into this, this handmaiden. And, and as soon as that child was born, now, now Sarah set this up. Sarah told Abraham to go into the handmaid. Sarah set it up. Abraham went in there and she did have a son. When Sarah saw that son, it just seemed that she just couldn't take it no more. And she told that girl, get out of here. Even though she set it up. But she said, get out of here and, and, and go. You can't stay here. And, of course, the girl left and found herself out there in the wilderness with that boy, with Ishmael, by herself. But God came to her and said, I'll, I'm going to take care of this boy. But my, my, my seed is going to be through Isaac, but, but, but I'm going I'm, I'm to take care of you. So even if you make a mistake, ladies, even if you make a mistake, even if, even if you allow yourself to make mistakes, and even if mistakes come into your life, listen, don't give up. Don't give up because God is love. He is, God can't hate. God cannot hate. Now you can do some, some damnable, corruptible, demeaning things and, and, and wicked and wretched things, but God is love. God can't hate. I don't care what you have done. God can't hate you. 
Don't ever feel that God says, oh, God, God hates me for that. No, God can't hate. God is love. And if you make a mistake in the summer of your life, if you make a mistake in the fall of your life, don't let that mistake cause you to move away from God. Because God is still standing saying, come unto me. I know you made a mistake. I know you messed up. I know you didn't do right. But if you come to me, I will give you rest. God is love. And, we, and I want you to always remember that God is love. God is love. And we do some bad things in our life. And, and we make bad mistakes in our life. And we say mean things in our life. And we do, we do mean things in our life. But if you just quit and, and decide to come to the Lord, he'll say, I'll welcome you back. I'll welcome you back. And the, and, and the story with the prodigal son is a beautiful story because it gives you some idea, some conceptualization of who God is. You know when that boy came to himself? The boy came to himself and he was on his way home and his daddy saw him afar off. You know, and, and it just looks like maybe the boy was tired. It just, it just looked like the boy was trying to get there. It just, when you read the story, this is not in the story, but it just seemed like that, that it could very easily fit the story. That the boy was hungry, he had been in the hog pen, he had traveled a long way, and he was on his way home, and the daddy saw him afar off, and it just looked like the daddy was saying, my God, he might not make it. He, he coming home, but he's stumbling, and he might not make it. I am going and meet him. I'm going and make sure that my son makes it home. And that's the way God is. God looks at us and he sees us stumbling. He sees us falling. He sees us in the pit of sometime immorality. But God will come down to us if we will look up to God through faith in him. Because God is love. God is love. And in him is no darkness at all. And if today, if today uh, you in the winter of your life, or even if you're in the summer of your life, even if you're in the fall of your life, it doesn't matter where you are, there's always God. There's always God. See, young people can have problems too. You know, you say, well, I'm just young. I know you're young, but you can still have problems. And you can still have difficulty. And what I'm saying to you, always go to God, because God will never turn you down. He'll never turn you down. He'll never turn his back because he, he won't do that. He's not that kind of God. Isn't that, one, isn't that a wonderful God that will never turn his back on you? Never. He'll never turn his back on you. He will never say that I hate you. He will never say you ain't fit. He will never say that. He will just keep on loving you. The reason I know is because the Bible says, For God so loved the world. There's every rat, every sinner, every rascal, every low-down adulterer, every murderer. God loved the world. And he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how much God loved you. And, and, and what a wonderful God God is. What a wonderful God God is. So go with God. Go with God. And if you have not if you have not gotten to the place you want to be, if you have not reached the place you want to be, if you have not done the things you want to do, and, and, and you have not become the person that you want to become, and you are now in the fall of your life or in the winter of your life, listen, just don't, don't give up. Don't give up because God is, not only, God is not only just the God of the summer, at the summer, in the summertime. God is a God in the wintertime. And he'll be with you always, as I said before, even until the end of the world. And if you want God to be in your life, and if you want God to be a part of your life, and if you, and now, if you, now that you know that, you see, now that you know that, now that you know that God is with you, even though things are difficult, even though he's with you just like he was with Naomi. And, and, and the sisters, let me tell you, I, I don't know, you know, when tragedy hits like that, I mean, tragedy... I mean, that's, 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 that's the most difficult thing to try to go through. I mean, you love a man and then he dies on you. And then you got two wonderful sons and both of them die on you. Now you don't have nobody. Now you don't have, because the Bible doesn't say anything about a mother and dad. Now you don't have anybody. But you see, there was still God. And in the end, God was there. You remember Job, don't you? Remember Job? How Job went through all of that stuff? But in the end, you see, that's the point. In the end, Job was there. If you can just make it through 
and continue to love God. Don't let anybody get you off track. Don't let anybody put stuff in your head to cause you to begin to dislike or hate or misuse somebody. If you just stay with God, in the end, it'll be all right. If you can just wait on the Lord, it'll be all right. And if you're here right now and you want the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, and if you want the Lord to give you uh, that kind of solemnity, and even though Naomi said, I, you know, don't call me joy no more, just call me bitterness. Don't call me joy no because the Lord has done this to me, and he has visited me, and, and all this. Uh, you, know, you know, even you can talk negative stuff and God still loves you. You see? But you shouldn't talk negative stuff because, you see, if you talk negative, you begin to believe negative and you begin to act negative. So don't, don't, don't even say negative things. Because, because when you say negative stuff, negative stuff happens to you. You see? Don't even, don't even say negative things. You know, the, in, 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 in Romans chapter 4 and verse four, uh, 17, the Bible says, Call them things that be not as though they were. You see? Speak positively. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but it's going to be all right. Uh, I'm, I'm in a financial bind. I'm in a financial bind. I just don't know how I'm going to make it. But I tell you what, it's going to be all right. You see, you're calling things that be not as though they were. You see, my relationship is not good with my husband or with my wife or with my children. Or I'm going through a divorce. I'm separated. Then it's not easy, but it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. No, I'm not having a good time, but it's going to be all right. No, I'm working two jobs now. I, before, when I was married, I hardly worked at all. Now I got to work two jobs to try to make things meet. But that's all right. It's going to be all right. You see, you have to speak that. It's going to be fine. It's going to be all right. God's going to take care of me. I'm not worried. I'm just going to run on. See what the end going to be. I'm calling things to be not as though they were. And if you keep saying that, it'll get all right. You see, if you just keep saying it, it'll get all right. But you got to keep saying it. Jesus, you can have what you say. You say, and he said, one time, if you, if you, if you say that mountain move, it'll, you just keep saying mountain move after a while, it'll move. If you have the faith to do that with. And so, uh, and so what I'm saying to you is, go, 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 go into tomorrow believing that it's going to be all right. Go, go into tomorrow. Listen, I know every one of you have problems because I have them. All of us have problems. But listen, don't you take them with you tomorrow. You see, when you lay down tonight and you wake up in the morning, God has given you another day. Oh, yeah. And you know, when God gives you, uh, gives you another day, you know what God is saying? It's going to be all right. That's what he's saying. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. You know, people may be talking about you. They may be stabbing you in the back. They may not like you. And bills may be piling up and all that sort of thing. And folks, say, I'm going to get you. And, and I'm going to get you. And, and I'm going to do this to you. And whatever. But when God gives you another day, God is saying, don't worry about that. I am in control. I'm in control. One thing they cannot stop, they cannot stop the sun from rising. And every time the sun rises, there's God speaking to you, telling you, I'm in control. I'm in control. So you, you take that with you as you go down I-95 tomorrow. And as you go to meet the man tomorrow. And as you go to your office tomorrow, you take that with you. And, and you, just, you just understand that no weapon formed against you is going to be able to prosper. Because God's going to be with you. He's going to be, he said, I'll be with you. And if you just believe that, in this, and it, it, it all come back to faith. If you would just believe, if you would just believe that God is who he is, and God is a sovereign God, and God has all power in heaven and in earth, and the devil can do you no harm. Oh, he can talk about you, but he can't do you no harm. He can't do you no harm. And so, uh, if tonight, if, if tonight uh, you need... Uh, to strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ. And if tonight you just need the Lord Jesus Christ to really be a part of your life and you want him to really be a part of your life and you want the church to pray for you for this to happen to you, we'll do that. And if you sin tonight, uh, Jesus is waiting for you to come. He knows all about your sin. There's no need of holding your head down. He knows all about your sin. You see, there's no need of, you know, going through that. He knows all about that. So all you got to do is just confess your sins. Confess your faults one to another and pray that God will forgive you of your sins. And, and God will forgive you of your sins. And if you're a sinner, if you're in this house tonight and you have not rendered obedience to the gospel call, you have, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, then you need to do it. And here's how you do it. You have to have faith in Jesus because without faith it's impossible to please God. You must repent of all of your sins. 
Luke chapter 13, verse number 5. You have to confess with your mouth what your heart believes, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we will baptize you in the water. And in the water, you will meet the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all of your sins. And you arise, born again, child of God, and a member of the church of Christ. That's how you get in the church. And that's the same way you get into Christ. If you want to get into Christ tonight, I want you to do it. And I want you to do it now. And if you need the prayer of the church, I want you to come. And if you need to confess, I want you to come because this is your opportunity to do so. This is your best chance to do it. Tomorrow it may not be, tomorrow is not promised. And you may not make it till tomorrow. So if you need Jesus and you want him in your life and you want him to be a part of your life and you want to, and you want to better understand what it is that you need to do uh, to, to stay um, on that straight and narrow, uh, you need to ask the Lord for strength and faith and you get all that through the word for the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and then paul said that the word of god dwell in you richly and so if you want to make a new commitment to jesus if you want to if you want a new beginning and if you want to rededicate or dedicate your life to jesus tonight i want you